Today, I'm going to review the telephoto lens by Sarui. I previously reviewed the moment lenses, and I was really happy with the wide angle lens, not so happy with the telephoto lens. After that video, I got a recommendation from John Harvey, and he recommended that I try out the Sarui lens. And so I tried it out, and I was amazed to see that it actually fit the moment case. Anyway, I ended up returning the moment telephoto lens. So this is going to be a quick review. First, I want to compare this lens to the Moment Telephoto lens. My main gripe with the Moment Telephoto lens was the sharpness. This Sarui lens is much sharper, especially at the edges. Also, vignetting is much better on this lens compared to the Moment lens. The Sarui lens doesn't exhibit the same barrel distortion as the other lens. Overall, I'm much happier with the image quality from this lens compared to that of the Moment lens. So as far as build quality, this lens feels just as weighty and just as well built as the Moment lens. Not quite the same unboxing experience as the Moment lenses, but hey, what can you do? As I mentioned at the beginning, this actually fits on the same Moment case that I have, so that's a huge plus. Sarui also offers a clip that you can buy that allows you to attach these lenses without having to use a specific case, so that's awesome too. Like the Moment lens, this comes with a pouch and the lens cap, but something that this has that the other one doesn't is a lens cap for the back. As far as image quality goes, this is much better. I mean, that's the most important thing to me is how this lens actually looks. I was really disappointed with the Moment lens. This one, I'm super happy with it. Value. For almost half the price of the Moment lens, this just delivers so much more. Maybe the unboxing experience is not as good, but image quality is way better. So, Moment, you guys gotta look at this lens. So I purchased this lens at B&H Photo Video. You can find that in the link description below. I would definitely recommend this lens. I haven't gotten a chance to try out the wide angle or their fisheye lens. I did like the Moment wide angle lens, but I wasn't satisfied with the telephoto and that's why I purchased this one. I would definitely say if you're looking for a telephoto for your Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, this is the one to buy. So usually I like to answer comments from previous videos. But my last video was getting kind of long, so I kind of held back on that, so I'm doing it on this one. The comments were on my video on how to improve the Pixel 2 XL screen quality for $2.50. The top comment was from This Is Tech Today, and he said, thanks for the shout out, dude. This Is Tech Today, if you don't know, he does a lot of reviews on the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. I found out about that app from him, so thanks to him. The reoccurring comment was that people were saying that it helped with their Pixel 2 XL screen, and they also asked how it affected battery life. I'm super happy that it helped out. I mean, that was the point of the video. Yeah, and then you asked if it affected battery life. I mean, it seems like it could because it's an overlay, but actually I haven't noticed any difference when I actually go into the settings to see how much uh, battery life it's taking. It doesn't even show up. It's probably less than 1%. The only time that I do see it on that screen is when I'm actually using it to calibrate and mess around with the settings, but that's because I have the app open. So the interesting and funny comment was from Bojan Bojovic, and he said, colors are good, the screen is good, learn what sRGB is, it is an issue, but only in your head. <laughs> it's only in my head. Yeah, thank you, thank you for letting me know. And um, actually, yes, it is in my head. Um, learn what sRGB is. I think I have an idea what that is. I've done color calibration for over 10 years, and I actually make presets for Lightroom where it's my job to understand colors, color science, things like that. I did notice that the luminance on certain colors, specifically reds, magentas, and yellows, the luminance was too low. So yeah, it's in my head. It's, you know, my eyes do see it. It's something I can actually measure though. Even somebody who wouldn't consider themselves an expert in screens or calibration, they've noticed people look at the screen and say, oh, it looks kind of dull. And that's because those colors don't have enough luminance and it's something that we can easily pick up. A calibrated monitor is great when you're creating content, but most of us are not creating content on our phones now. We're using it to consume content. What I want from my phone is something that's enjoyable to look at because I'm mostly watching YouTube videos on Instagram, you know, just consuming content on it. I do want an accurate screen, but I would prefer to have a screen that is enjoyable to watch and look at rather than a screen that is accurate. In an ideal world, I'd rather have both. So anyway, that's the video for today. I hope you liked it. Anyway, take care. See ya, bye.